once it's become an empire, then a greater sense of Muslim identity. Looking back, it seems like these earlier stories, maybe they're not really correct anymore. And we get that a few historians of the ninth century, they say this explicitly, in particular Ibn Hisham, who takes up Ibn Ishaq's biography of the Prophet Muhammad, who was writing this around 750s. Ibn Hisham, who takes it up in the 820s, he reads it and says, well, it's very strange stories. <laughs> this doesn't look right at all. <laughs> I'm going to cut those bits out. And if basically, whatever doesn't fit with what's in the Quran and what my colleague scholars say, I'm going to cut that out. And so to him, he's reading this and it just doesn't fit with what he thinks is the case. We don't have the original. Ibn Sham throws away the original and nobody kept it because his became, and some other later biographies became authoritative and so people just focus on that. You know, they get rid of the old ones. Um, so in that sense, the destruction of the original. The, and it's destruction in the sense that we can't really tell, of course, given that we don't have the original of Ibn Ishaq, we don't know how much change Ibn Hisham brought in. And that's why in that sense, it's destruction. But of course, what I really mean is it's heavily transformed, but it's, yeah, for us, we'd love to know what did Ibn Ishaq's biography look like? <laughs> why was Ibn Hisham so shocked by it? A number of Christian sources imply that Muhammad was actually trying to capture the Holy Land and Jerusalem in mm. particular, because he thought the end of the world was just about to happen and that he wanted to be there in Jerusalem where Jesus was meant to come again and start you know, the judgment day. So could it be, and this is what Stephen Schumacher would say, that this is the sort of thing the early Muslim sources were saying too. They actually had that account. And that's what shocked <laughs> some of the later writers. And that's why they changed it. Mm. There's, what I would say is there is, so for example, the, in the Quran it mentions the earliest sanctuary of, Muhammad, of the world, of people, of mankind. And to me, this pretty much must be Jerusalem. And it, mm. it kind of, you can see that from some early commentators as well, Quran commentators. And the fact also, although it's stated, but never really explained, is that the first Qibla was towards Jerusalem. So Jerusalem must have been very important in the beginning. And what one might think is that Muslims initially, the first Muslims had a number of sanctuaries, mm. but that over time they became a, a focus on Mecca as the Muslim sanctuary and the others get downgraded. They still bear a bit actually Jerusalem and that, but obviously they're much downgraded in favor of Mecca. So maybe in the earlier sources, Jerusalem is maybe equal in importance to Mecca. And this is, so it, it perhaps changes like this. But it, it is, uh, I can only emphasize, it's very difficult to be 100% sure. 